Hey everybody, this is Richard Bush and we're going to be making deviled eggs in the air fryer. So I'm going to use my own recipe, which is not too complicated. Uh, we're going to use our air fryer and I'm going to show you the whole process start to finish and with a, the magic of a little bit of TV editing, we'll uh, try to keep this video short and sweet. So let's go over the ingredients. Okay, and for our ingredients, we have six eggs. We've got a little bit of mayonnaise. We're going to use Miracle Whip instead. I'm going to use a quarter cup of that, one teaspoon of mustard, an eighth of a teaspoon of salt, a little bit of pepper. Ah, uh, come on, y'all know me. A lot of pepper and some paprika. We're going to go ahead and put all that into the air fryer. We have a Chefman and we're going to go for 300 degrees for 20 minutes. We are not going to preheat. That's something I've learned. It kind of kills everything. And once the 20 minutes is up, then we will just go ahead and put them into an ice bath for 10 minutes. So let's go ahead and get started. We'll start with the eggs. That'd be a great starting point point for any uh, eggs, you know. Make some deviled eggs. You just go ahead and line the bottom of your basket. Alrighty. Shove it on in carefully. Don't want scrambled eggs. Alrighty. And it's just as simple as setting the temperature and the time. So we'll go to the top to 300 degrees close enough and then we'll go for 20 minutes there we are okay so the next step is going to involve taking all the ingredients and getting them all mixed up into our mixing bowl which is the same one that the eggs just came out of and then when the eggs come out of their ice bath, we're gonna go ahead and shell them, cut them in half, take the yolks out, mix that in, and then we will have our uh, egg goop. <laughs> For lack of a better way to put it, the stuff that goes in the eggs. So uh, we're gonna go ahead and get straight to putting those ingredients in. I won't bore you with how I do it because it is a little messy. You know, maybe one day we'll have a little extra episode or something, who knows. Anyway, I got some work to do. We'll see you in a few minutes. Okay, so the air fryer is almost done. As soon as it's done, we're gonna take the eggs out using some tongs. I'm gonna be careful because these suckers are gonna be hot. And we're gonna go ahead and put it into the ice bath, which I've already set up in a little uh, plastic bowl. So while we're waiting on the ding to go off, just want to go ahead and recap. I've got all the ingredients already mixed up in a bowl and ready to go. Just need to get the hardened yolks out and add those in as well. So as soon as the air fryer dings, we will start getting everything out and we'll set the eggs into the ice bath for 10 minutes. And just like that, the air fryer dinged right as I cut away. So we're gonna go ahead and grab the handle. Be really careful not to burn yourself. And there they are. Now, notice these have little speckles on them. That means they got sufficiently hot. So they should be done on the inside. So we're gonna go ahead and get the ice bath ready. Now, your cooking times and experiences may vary from mine. So use your own judgment, but the guideline I'm using is a general one that I've come up with and it has yet to fail. And once you're done, you'll also want to take your fry basket, give it a good soak in soap and water or a dishwasher if you have one of those. You gotta keep it clean. Otherwise, you'll get crappy results. Just a little side note, it is hard to move eggs with tongs when you're not actually looking at them and using a cell phone camera. Okay, so those are done. We'll go ahead and put a cap on there. I may have the wrong size lid, there it goes. And we're gonna go ahead and put that into the refrigerator. See you in a few minutes. Recording. All right, so we uh, have a little bit of a technical mishap. I will check the video here in a little bit. So we'll start from this point going now. All right, so I've extracted the yolk from the eggs. We're gonna go ahead and whisk it up. Nope, not a good idea. Let's go ahead and get a fork. I really wanted to use the drill and put the whisk on it, but you know, I can't be too redneck.
coordination is not all that great. But I'm really glad I've got someone else holding the camera. This is a little thick, which I'm okay with. Get a good little spoonful, but first, the chef has to taste their own poison. Let's see what that tastes like. I need it. Ah! What happened? You shouldn't put the fork back in the bowl that it, you eat off of. Yes, dear. See, I told you, I'm still learning. But you know what? We're all family here. This is going to be for us. It's not for anybody else. Also, you name one chef that's actually followed that protocol. I can't think of one. Maybe Alton Brown, but... Alright, so that's good and mixed up. Now it's time to put our deliciousness in the eggs. Yeah, that sounds good. Just a little bit, a little bit more, and I'd like to try to do about a half a spoon. And when the egg doesn't cooperate, you gotta get physical with it. So about that much. <laughs> well, only on live episodes like this. I think the dog just got himself a treat, but um, we will see what we can do with that one. I keep the counters clean, so I might just go ahead and eat it. It's terrible. Just terrible, you know? I am not editing that out of the video, just saying. I'm keeping that in. That's a classic. But that's just one egg that I'm not going to have for dinner tonight. Honey, do you want to tell everybody what we're having for dinner? We're having eye around steak. Mm -hmm. He's making deviled eggs. We're having broccoli and cheese and salad. All right. And that's actually coming up just after this. So once we get done with the eggs, we're going to put them in the fridge after we've garnished them with paprika or however you want to say it and let them chill until it's time for dinner. We also might go ahead and make up some sweet tea or something, you know? A southerner's got to get our tea on. Well, we got another defect. But, that's okay. We'll keep it in there. Accidentally tore the side of the egg. Last one. Okay, let's get some of the gook out. Put it on that one. Okay. Get my hands washed real quick. Put the paprika on. Okay. You made a mess on the counter, but that's okay. Yeah, I know, it's gonna happen. But what are we gonna do about the uh, lost egg? Well. I know what I'm going to do. I'm going to dust it off and eat it. One of the spoils of making your own food. Okay, a little bit of uh, paprika. See, you can use a hand, you can use a finger, you can shake it. I don't care. Don't go too heavy, though. And, of course, we'll go with that one as well. All right. Well... I guess maybe there was a reason why this one was wasted after all. It's time to do my best Guy Fieri and just go stupid. All right, make sure there's nothing on it. There's not. All right, let's go. That's pretty good. I just made that recipe about, oh, I'd say a month ago, and this is the second time I've done it. So it knocked it out of the ballpark for me. So, um, Sorry about that. We're going to come back here in just a little bit and we're going to start on the salad and then we're going to start dinner. So see you then. 
So I'm back again and we're going to go ahead and start chopping up the uh, tomato for the salad and getting everything mixed up. Before I do, however, I just want to go ahead and say while I'm doing this that uh, my wife is one of the most wonderful people in the world. She supports me. She's made me a better person today. And she was also the one recording everything from the, well, from about half of the video so far. It's really wonderful. But, uh... I didn't want her hearing this part until I actually started, you know, uploading everything until she could see it for the first time. So, don't mind me, I'm just cutting a mater. But uh, she has made me a much better person than I am now. Well, that was before, rather, I'm sorry. I'm caught up in my own words. It's all unscripted here. So, before. And I don't know if this made it into one of the previous edits. I was a ham and cheese and bologna eating kind of guy. And uh, with ravioli and, you know, just basic canned crap that's not good for you. Um, I wasn't organized. I was a loser, essentially. So she made things... She made me wake up and realize what I could be. She helped me unlock my inner potential. And now I am a cutlery fool. I like to cook. I like to grill. I like to do things with my family. Just things I never thought I could do. It's real wonderful when you have somebody that inspires you to be better, you know, every day. It took me a long time. It took me at least half my life to find her, and I plan on spending the other half of that life with her. Just getting in all kinds of fun and trouble and stuff like that. I don't know how she stands me. I don't know how she puts up with me, honestly. But um, I'm happy she does because I don't think anybody else could without a crazy check. So we're going to go ahead and finish up dicing this tomato and add it in. It's kind of hard for me to hold the camera and a knife and the tomato and do all this. So you get to get this view of my ugly mug and then I'm going to switch it so you can see what it looks like when it's all done. God willing, I still have all my fingers. Okay, alright, it's time to show you. Okay, nothing major going on here. Just uh, sliced up the tomatoes like that and then diced them into little pieces. We're going to then add that to our salad mix, which I've already prepped up ahead of time. Don't worry about the color, that is just from the lighting in here, it kind of sucks. Uh, we don't have very many ingredients for a salad, and we kind of like basic salads. You know, a little bit of lettuce, a little bit of vegetables, and then add our own dressing. So, I'm going to go ahead and finish dicing up the rest of that one, and uh, we're going to get it put together, and then we're going to start supper. Alright, so eggs are done, salad's made, it is time to move on to the meat of the matter. See what I did there? Alright, we're going to start by seasoning up the eye of round steak and then we're going to get the broccoli and cheese going which I'm going to admit it's just broccoli and cheese in a bag from the freezer section at the store nine minutes at a microwave and you're done so we're going to go ahead and get started with the seasoning y'all know me I do like seasons so hey you're going to see what I got okay getting started we have our eye of round steak we have a little bit of spray butter for our copper pan which is currently setting on medium heat and getting warm. We'll go ahead and start by spraying it down to get it prepped up and ready. And of course I'm out. So get a new one. Just let that sit. You don't really need to but I like to do that to make the flavors just get in there. Now we're going to go ahead and use our seasonings. We've got oregano, garlic salt, basil, parsley, onion, black pepper, and salt. Everybody has a holy trinity. I don't know what this would be called, but hey, we're going to go ahead and roll with it. So we'll start with the salt. Don't have to go too much. Gordon Ramsay is allegedly still putting salt on his food. So imagine that, if you will. Man sure loves to use salt. My normal go-to would be strawberries. You know, you get that in the 
stores in southeast Missouri, not really anywhere else. It's a seasoning that wins barbecue contests all the time. It's also been a staple in my house since I was a little kid. Okay, now we got our salt and pepper. Go with our garlic. And just a little bit will do you. Onion powder. <laughs> Be careful if you get Markham brand onion powder because the holes in the top of the lids are huge. And this stuff will just come flying out, so you gotta be real careful. Wow. So, I like to go ahead and season this in the meat tray. Well, went a little too far on that, but you know. And I don't really season the other side, not until it's actually in the pan. Okay, so get no one more look at that. We're gonna try to fit all that in there. It can be done, trust me. Now once we've got it going, we're gonna cover it up and then let it cook on one side for about five to ten minutes, flip to the other side, maybe about five minutes. While it's in the middle of cooking, we will switch over to our microwave and get the last part of dinner going, and then we'll be eating pretty soon. So, little pro tip, if uh, you're going to cook like this, which I prefer to cook out on the grill, what you want to do is maintain your heat at medium. Once you get a really good solid sizzle, turn it down just a little bit. Let the lid on the pan do the rest. So, let's get an idea of what that sizzle is going to sound like. Okay, the pan's already popping, so we're going to grab some meat. We're going to throw it in seasoning side down carefully that's the sound you want and just so everybody knows I do wash my hands every time that I pause the video to do the more so we're not getting no salmonelli or nothing like that we have a problem we have one left what do we do well Carefully reach in without burning ourselves. I probably should use a tool. Now we'll grab the other one. Just kind of fit it in there. Told you it would fit. That's what I like about these copper pans. They distribute the heat equally along all the sides and gets everything. I'll toss that away. All right. I'm going to go ahead and season these and put the lid on and then we'll come back here in about 10 minutes and check to see what's going on. Oh yeah, real quick, I just wanted to give you a look at that seasoning profile as I like to call it. Look at how that is looking. Oh, that's beautiful. Go ahead and top it and let it roll. All right, everybody. The meat has cooked pretty long on one side. We're going to go ahead and check it out. Look at that. It's already cooked all the way through. Just need to turn this over a little bit, give it a little bit of TLC time. As I like to call it. And we're going to go ahead and start our broccoli and cheese, which I've already got in the microwave and ready to go. I just literally need to push the button. We are also going to turn our heat down from medium to low, medium, low. All right, let's go over to the microwave. We're gonna go for six minutes. We're gonna add a few. There we go, that'll work. All right, so by the time this is done, then the uh, broccoli and cheese will be done. We'll get everything served up and everybody's gonna eat. And we have a guest tonight. We have our adopted son, I guess you'd call him, Peyton Lopez. He just lives right around the corner. He's going to get to enjoy some of this goodiness. Okay, and through the magic of video editing, we are back and we are ready to finish up. The microwave is about to ding here in a few seconds. In the meantime, we're going to go ahead and get these beautiful steaks off here, get them on the plate, and take everything to the table. All right. Oh, these came out awesome. 
and they are still a little bit pink in the middle because they didn't cook that long they didn't cook okay they cooked long enough but they cooked low and slow yep there's the microwave now normally I will marinate but I didn't this time okay we will police our mess here just shortly and uh, it looks like we have the family here right now and I think they are ready to eat but I'm gonna go ahead and finish it up and we'll see you at the table well looks like it's all ready everybody's digging in already I'm happy for that we got Peyton over here we got Walker of course Peyton and Walker are trying to keep their faces hidden not Mrs. Bush here she's doing awesome she's getting everything ready I'm eating. I'm hungry. Oh, yeah. Well, let's take a look at the food. All right. <laughs> the boys are being camera shy. Yep. Here we go. Deviled eggs, brock and cheese, and steak, and drinks, and all that good stuff. Well, time to eat. Later.